earlier this month, Samore dropped her comedy special, Chandelier, on Netflix. In the special, she touched on Zaya Wade's recent transition and would end up misgendering her during the joke. A part of some of the response towards Samore, one user would write, y'all love to say nobody is exempt in comedy, but fail to realize that intentionally misgendering is blatantly transphobic thus making the jokes fall flat and just as ignorant as everyone else's uninformed comments on the subject. Today we have our comedy hype analyst Capone calling to the show along with very special guest, comedian Samson and author and associate professor at Howard University, Marcus Board, to give their thoughts and reactions. But first, let's take a look at this clip. Hashtag girl dad was such a big movement that even Dwayne Wade and his son got in on the action. <laughs> Listen, the internet was accepting of the fact that the little boy wanted to express himself by dressing like a woman. Now the nigga net had a problem with it. The nigga net threw grease in the game. Somebody on the nigga net said the little boy wanted to have a sex change. Little Boosie Badass lost his motherfucking mind. Little Boosie Badass was all on the internet neck talking about, hell no, Dwayne Wade, don't cut his dick off Dwayne. He ain't but 10 years old, Dwayne, don't cut his dick out. Now, I know this is going to be a layered conversation, so we'll take it piece by piece. Capone, I want to start with you. Um, what's your reaction to this clip of some more, and do you think the backlash that she's receiving is fair? I think it was funny. The way she uh, mimicked uh, Boosie Badass was uh, very funny to me. I, I can't, you know, the subject is, I guess, sensitive to people who understand the subject. I don't understand the subject, so um, I'm not... I don't want to sound harsh about it, but it was a it was a good joke. I thought it was a very good joke, especially how she mimicked boot, Bootsy. Samson, let me bring you in. Um, I'd love to get your, your thoughts and reactions. And again, thank you for joining us on this conversation. As I always tell you, bring so much value. So thank you so much for being here. Um, what's your reaction to the Samore clip? And also, do you think the backlash that she's receiving, do you think it's fair? So my personal reaction to the clip was agreeing with Capone. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, I have trans friends who I spoke with who also found it hilarious. I think what people are expecting from comedians is that we show up as professors on certain subjects. Um, and in this case, I think they wanted her to be a professor on gender studies or, or gender and sexual expression. And she is not, you know, gender identity expression. And she's not. She is a comedian. Um, even if she does have some idea of how that goes, you have to understand that she is talking directly to her audience who wouldn't understand saying that Zaya transitioned into a woman they still think of Zaya as a boy who has become a woman. That's the type of language that a lot of Black people have because we don't understand everything about the transgender community. We also don't understand a lot of things about pronouns. Um, so I think what most of it is, though, is just outrage. A lot of the people who are outraged about what some more had to say have never done anything to help the transgender community except get on Twitter and scream about it so that they can look popular and write and virtuous on Twitter. Twitter fingers are definitely real. Now, speaking of professor, we actually have author and associate professor at Howard um, University, Marcus Board. Thank you so much for joining us on this topic as well. Um, we are very appreciative to have you. Um, same question to you. I want to get your reaction to seeing that some more clip. And do you think the backlash that she's receiving, do you think it's fair? Yeah, thank you for having me, and I appreciate being here with you all. I think the backlash is fair as long as it's real people. So, you know, we know online there's a lot of bots and fake accounts and all that, but I do think that uh, your comedy is not always going to land with every audience, and the audience that doesn't like it should feel free to, to speak up and speak out about uh, how they feel about it. I think the fact that there are people speaking up and speaking out does kind of go against, Samson, your point, that people don't know these things. Obviously, some people do who are not, I can assure you, all professors. Uh, but I do think that that's one of the challenges is this idea that Black people are all one community and we're not. We're many communities. To Samson's point, uh, if you haven't tapped in to trans communities or queer communities or, or poor communities or wealthy communities or professor communities, then you can't necessarily guarantee that what you're saying is going to translate all the way across the board. I think the the, the standard for comedians uh, can be unfair, but at the end of the day, it's also a conversation about who's your audience 
and how they feel about it. And when you put a clip online, your audience becomes a lot bigger. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you so much for providing that, you know, your side of things. Now, this conversation, and like I said, there's so many layers, right? This is just a stand-up special, but we know on a daily basis, people deal with, you know, misgendering or whether it's, you know, on purpose or by accident. There's just a lot of things, and I think Samson put it perfectly, a lot of misunderstanding, what some people just don't understand. Um, so I want to play a clip and get, your, get you all's reaction. So let's take a look at this clip. You are gonna give me my money back. Excuse me, sir, there's a young man in here. And you watch him Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. Right beforehand, you f***ing said sir. Sir? Mother take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will show you a f***ing sir. I need your corporate number. Because I'm going to talk, call them and talk about how I was misgendered several times in this store. I apologize. Just you're going to disrespecting trans people in this store, which I plan on telling the entire LGBTQ community. You're going to lose money over this. Now, Capone, I'm going to bring you into this conversation first and ask the question because I know you've been very open and honest, and I know even you and Samson have had conversations on this platform where you were able to receive you know, some understanding and, and be able to relate and Samson be able to give you the clarity that you've been asking for. So I want to ask you, you know, in these situations, what do you think is the proper protocol when you misgender someone, especially if it is an accident, a genuine accident? Um, I'm sorry, but I mean, he was a man. And <laughs> I, I probably... I probably would have said so too. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, he went. He 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 has his point of what he wants to be called, but I I am sorry. I was I was raised that a man is a man. I don't disrespect it, and for him to go, I, I, whoever he was yelling at, he expected him to understand it right away and i don't think the guy pretty much understand it <laughs> he almost looked like he didn't understand english but yeah, I, i'm just I, i'm being honest i, I would have probably said sir too no honesty is definitely what we need and i think honesty is what's needed in order to get us to move forward um so marcus let me bring you in i want to get your reaction to it but also what do you think is the proper protocol when you misgender someone especially if it is a genuine a genuine accident marcus <laughs> sure yeah i mean Obviously, I'm not going to choose to call somebody something that they don't want to be called. And I think that's really the baseline, you know, um, to call people by their names. Uh, and if they tell you that's my name, then that's their name. I think it's also important to to note that um, anger is a defensive emotion. It's a protective emotion. So while I don't think that uh, trying to fight somebody to take them outside is necessarily appropriate, I think something as simple in my experience who, who, you know, somebody who has messed up people's gender and pronouns before is just, you know, my bad, fix it and move forward. Um, I also think it's important to note that this is a, a, at least phenotype in terms of how they look. This is a white person. And there are a lot of conversations to be had about the relationships uh, that between white queer communities and, and black queer communities in particular, as we're having in this, in this conversation. So, I think there's a lot of factors at play there. Uh, and uh, the more we get past the conversation of, well, I decide that I want to call you one thing versus another, the sooner we can get into those conversations that are also very, very, very important. Yeah, and I, and I hope we just, we find a way to just come together and connect because I don't think, you know, the more divided we are, the worse we are as a community. So thank you so much for that. Samson, let me bring you in. I want to get your thoughts because I know you've had a similar situation in which you did reveal on a recent um, interview that I'm going to bring up in just a moment. But I want to get your take on it as well. What's your reaction to that? You know, what's the proper protocol when you do misgender someone? Because it, it, it can happen and it does happen. Okay, so I want to express it as clearly as possible. Uh, when, when I say this first, I am not transphobic. I never have been. I have a long history of supporting the trans community. Um, and so I think when someone says these are my pronouns, you know, as, as far as I know, you know, I wish to be referred to as he or she or they or X, Y. I mean, there's so many different things. They should be called that. At the same time, in certain situations, we have to use common sense. And clearly, 
the person that was in that GameStop or wherever they were, you would not, I would hope we would have common sense enough not to let somebody like that square up with a biological female one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, come on, let's, that, that person could probably beat some men that I know. Yeah, no, I, and I, I think a lot of people agree. Now, what I, what I want to do, Samson, because you did share a story on a recent interview that you did um, on the Black Report for Fox Soul, and you're receiving some of the backlash. So I want to play a couple of clips, both that clip and um, there's a, a, a trans activist who would respond and give you the opportunity to respond to it as well. So let's take a look at these clips. What's your take on just sort of the use of language and, and the changing of language uh, among black queer uh, folks? I think it gets a little murky when we start talk, talking about the pronouns, because in my opinion, I think if you're going to use a pronoun, you need to at least uh, model that gender somewhat well. Mm. I was in Target a couple weeks ago. I saw somebody that if I was broke down long side of the road, I would have expected that person to help me push the dog on car. Mm. But I'm squeezing past and I go, excuse me, sir. This person turns around and go, I'm a, I'm a man. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like I understand you wanting to be called whatever you want to be called. But if you want to be called that, at least put some effort into it. You no, know, he ain't, well, they didn't have on no sundress or no kitten heels or nothing. So how was I supposed to know? <laughs> Uh, as someone who's not a part of the community, they, they scare me because I want to be respectful and I want to get it right, but I'm so confused and I still have a hard time with the word queer. It's and a lot. You know, we, we want to get it right, but this stuff is new. So leave room for people to ask questions without biting their head off because people can't look at you and tell what you are. Sad that I have to say this, but I got to say this. Some of you gay, specifically black, are the most transphobic ignorant motherfuckers I ever did and will ever encounter in my entire life. So, for those of you all who have been under a rock, okay, um, Samson, uh, the comedian, has had several different run-ins with transphobia, okay? And he has been approached by several different girls in community, myself included everybody grace but i'm sick and tired of specifically giving my black gay queer community grace when you should already know better as a black gay man who was heckled by one of the greats in comedy who straight up told you that your gay ass wasn't good enough to even be in comedy you would think that somebody would understand what it is like to have people go out of their way to disenfranchise you instead samson you go out of your way to tap dance, booty clap, and gigolo for these cishet people that wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. And what irks and bothers me is that a lot of you gay comedians, whether it be male, female, or indifferent, lean on the fact that you're gay to be funny. Now, Samson, I know that you've seen this clip um, before joining us, um, but I, I love to give you the opportunity to respond because it seems that a lot of people, um, you know, are mirroring how hope Feel. So I want to give you the opportunity to, you know, maybe if there is some some clarity that you want to add or just be able to respond in your own words, Samson. Well, I think that uh, Hope Giselle, I think Hope Giselle is just a big, angry person. Um, you know, the most that I <laughs> the, most, the most that I see Hope do is is get online and and yell about trans rights, you know. If she wanted to do something for the trans community, she would be out in the street running for office somewhere. But the thing is, is so many of these folks get online and they will, um, you know, yell about trans rights, scream about trans rights, but I don't see them out in the community. And while I don't always get it right on, you know, uh, certain parts of not even, I wouldn't even say trans identity, I would say my issue as an issue that a lot of us have, have is around pronouns, okay? So, you know, I have a long history of, you know, uh, organizing uh, walkouts at funerals of trans women who've been killed, you know, and, and having to listen to pastors preach over their dead bodies about, you know, how they'll go to hell and things like that. I've helped organize walkouts of those funerals. I've done charity events that I've organized for places that house homeless trans women. You know, I've been on the front lines at marches and in community with trans women. And so I know I'm not perfect, but I made an effort and I have the receipts for over 15 years. Um, I show up. 
My issue is that we don't have enough honest conversations about gender identity. We don't even talk about sexuality. So you know we're not talking about gender identity. And I think folks get scared when people say out loud, everybody does not get that. And they get upset when, especially people in the gay community say, we don't all get that. But if we're not getting it and we're not having honest conversations about it, what makes you think that heterosexual people are all gonna get it? And so when I said earlier that people like some more are not professors, neither are her audience. And it doesn't mean that they're transphobic. It means they don't understand it the way you do. And so let's use common sense here. Just like we watched that video of that person who was in that GameStop, common sense, yes, we're gonna respect that as a trans woman, but you would not let that person square it with your mama one-on-one -on -one because at the end of the day, you know that biology is different. So we have to have certain conversations about how people show up and our understanding. Um, and, and that's really what is gonna get us to where we need to go, but we need to stop being politically correct about it and have, conversa have conversations that might hurt each other's feelings a little bit. Absolutely. Now, let me ask you this, Samson. Do you think the outrage that, that you are receiving, do you think it's fair? I know we asked about some more, but I want to ask about you. Do you think it's fair, the, the backlash and the, out, the outrage that you are receiving? Um, I don't think it's real. You know, I think that if it was real, we wouldn't be having this conversation in the first place. The reason people are outraged is because we are finally having an important conversation. And, you know, a lot of these folks who are online screaming about this and that about what I said, I didn't say anything that was transphobic. My comment wasn't even about trans women. It was about pronouns. And let's use common sense. If a person who does not know anything about pronouns or even gender expression see somebody come out the house looking like Rick Ross, they're not going to walk up to that person and call them Nicki Minaj. They're going to call them sir. Let's use common sense. It does not mean that people are transphobic. In fact, most Black people who I do know want to know. They get it wrong sometimes on certain things, but most people want to know, but a lot of people are going to use common sense because they see what they see. And so I if a person can look at you and don't you know, can't tell that you want to be called as she heard, they're going to mess up and a lot of people are going to, and a lot of people are going to have questions and uncomfortable comments because this is new for a lot of people. Absolutely. And I just want to say, I think you do a great job of adding in, like, I feel my opinion, making it very clear that it is, you know, an expression that's coming from you and you being very intentional about that. So I did want to note that because I noticed that. Marcus, I, I want to come to you and ask you the same question because we, we asked about some more. So now I kind of want to, you know, pivot and talk about Samson. Do you believe the outrage that Samson is receiving? Do you, do you feel that it's fair? Uh, like I said, with some more, yeah, I think so long as it's real, I think Samson touched on this. So long as it's real, I think it's fair. People uh, should be able to express themselves and, and articulate their needs. Uh, and anger, again, is a defensive emotion. And online, we get a lot of that. Um, I think. One of the challenges that I'm, I'm having um, with some of Samson's points is that I think there's this idea that oppression is this really big, most violent, most aggressive, most intense thing, and that resistance is this most outspoken, most out front, most out loud, even elected officials uh, to Samson's point. And I think those things are partially true. But I think what also happens, and a lot of scholars talk about this, what also happens is that we begin to forget how important our everyday interactions are, how important it is we treat one another, how important it is, for example, in my case, for being here today, having an opportunity to speak with people where we may not see eye to eye. I'm not a comedian. I don't find certain jokes funny for me. Um, but I think it's still important for us to be able to have these conversations. And in this case, the conversation is around a question of accountability. I don't think that we can be accountable to people we're not in community with. And I think that's one of the bigger challenges is that when people have outrage uh, about pronouns, for example, uh, outrage is something and accountability is something that you can't necessarily get from someone if they are not committed to you, if they're not in relationship with you. And so I know that certain people are gonna try and have this conversation uh, with Samson privately or publicly. And some of the folks that Samson has pointed out 
uh, don't have a problem with it. And that's just fine. Some people do. And the question becomes, where, where do we draw the line? I think the last thing I would say is that, um, and this kind of goes back to the some more example, and I think it's fair to, to bring up Dave Chappelle as well, given that these things are happening on Netflix, uh, and Netflix fired a whole bunch of Black people uh, and then put out a lot of these specials. There, there's a conversation, uh, My one of my advisors, Kathy Cohen, wrote a book called uh, Boundaries of Blackness that talked about uh, Black HIV and AIDS uh, organizing and community around that and how even within and among Black people, uh, we can still harm and oppress one another. Uh, and one of the concepts she talked about in there is called integrative marginalization, how some people are brought in to then police and push out other groups. And I think that's partially what we're seeing. Uh, I think the Netflix example is textbook. They bring in Black folk, they bring in Black comedians to then push out other Black people. And I think the more we have these conversations, I agree, the more we can have these conversations, the better we get at them. But I think it's always going to be really important uh, to lead with humility, to lead with honesty, and to make sure that, uh, that we're not doing more harm than good uh, when we choose to speak on issues. No, absolutely. And again, I appreciate you for chiming in. Samson, last question. What, you know, what do you think is the solution to help us move forward, to help us to, to get to that next step where we, we can be a community that has these tough conversations? What do you think is the, the next step for that? I think the most important step is open and honest communication. And so we've arrived at a point in society now where when people are open, openly and honestly speaking their truth, you know, for instance, looking at someone who is presenting clearly as a guy and saying, I see a guy, people automatically get offended by that and go, oh my God, that's transphobic. Perhaps parts of that may be, but at the same time, you have to understand that when you understand, you know, a gender presentation in a certain type of way versus people who biologically have presented that and understand it, there's going to be uh, some different views. And it's not always going to be pleasant when you have a conversation about understanding. I want understanding because I want to see us all live the best that we can uh, live and do that together in a, in a world that is equitable for everybody. But in order to do that, we can't cry when people express themselves. Um, you know, we have to say, hey, I see why you said that or why do you think that way as opposed to you're being this way because a lot of times people aren't just racist. A lot of times people aren't just homophobic or transphobic or sexist. Some people just don't see it from your point of view. And I think if we took the time to see each other more as human beings, as opposed to labels, we wouldn't have these problems so much. Absolutely, Marcus, I wanna give you the opportunity as well. What do you think is the solution to get to that next step that you talked about, you know, being a community to have these tough conversations? I know you mentioned some points, but I just wanna make sure it's clear for the audience. What are some of those key points that you think can be a solution to help us get to that next step? Yeah. I First of all, I want to say, um, Samson, I appreciate the nuance that you used in this most recent comment, because I think it, it's a level of nuance that shows a care and commitment and accountability that I'm not sure we were at at the beginning of the conversation. So I think that's important. Um, as far as where I come from, um, one thing that I say all the time is community is a verb. It's something that we do in practice. It's something that we don't necessarily do in front of the cameras, but it's something that we're committed to and that we enact with one another with care and with love. Um, something Samson said earlier, or he alluded to, is a, is a quote from Audre Lorde that says, politics don't stop in the bedroom, right? So when we talk about sexuality, when we talk about gender, um, we need to be having these conversations in the forefront. And as many of us know, people fought and died so that we can make these conversations go from a private space to a public conversation. Um, and I think we need to honor that. Um, and I think at the end of the day, we have to remember that the Black community is not just one group of people, that there are many groups of people with many different beliefs um, and that we need to use our imagination to, to dream a new world before we can just kind of walk into it. So I think that's a part of the process um, of getting people engaged, of getting people involved, even if their first step is online, taking it from online to being a little bit more active in each other's personal lives. And I, I, I like to add in one more thing too. Um, I think it would also help 
uh, while we are having these uh, very uncomfortable conversations, because it's not always going to be pretty, that we should invite uh, some trans folks and some gender nonconforming folks to be a part of the conversation um, so that people can see how these very honest conversations play out. Because there are some things that I would say to Hope, and Hope and I have had conversations before that might not be a particularly smooth, but, you know, I think that being able to model what some of these conversations look like would, would be very helpful for our community to see. Absolutely. And, and just for transparency, we did try to reach out to Hope to have her a part of this conversation because I, I agree with both of you. I think it's important to have these uncomfortable conversations, have representation at the table. I personally don't think that Hope is the best representation for the trans community because they don't need to see a big angry person all the time. Um, but there are several others who, who would uh, be able to come in and, and have a very compassionate, open conversation without uh, yelling with their chest out, you know, and in and, and, and creating space, particularly for gender nonconforming, because that's who I was talking about with the pronouns on Fox. Um, you know, people need to see people that they can relate to, not people who are screaming at them, ready to bite their heads off, because that's not going to make us like anybody. So let me let me ask you this, Samson. Who, who would be some people you would recommend for us to have on the show in these conversations that are um, in the trans trans community? I like Blossom Brown. Blossom C. Brown was on uh, a show with Caitlyn Jenner, um, and I like the the activist work that I've seen her do in community. Uh, it's not very popular with some political trans folks, but I like Flame Monroe's perspective as well, because Flame uh, is able to understand, you know, me and Flame, we come from kind of the same era where we had to fight a little bit to, to earn our rights and to gain our rights. And, and um, you know, somebody said uh, they think this generation is kind of missing the trauma that goes along with that. I guess somebody was joking and said that. And I don't think it's a level of trauma, but I think it's an, a level of understanding that in order to get where you need to go, you're going to have to hear some things you might not want to hear. Um, I also like Dane Aditi, uh, who is a poet and a singer and activist uh, in, in the Washington, D.C. area. And um, those are three who come to mind. There's also Ashley, yeah. Marie, Ashley Marie Preston, uh, but I think she got in trouble for saying something crazy. So I don't know if I would go with that either. Yeah, no. And I mean, we've had Flame on the show. Uh, go ahead, Marcus. I, I see you. Go ahead. I understand. I understand the points you're making, Samson. I, I do think it's important to name the issue of kind of calling out the, the angry black woman trope. Uh, I think you know that that, that idea uh, is all sorts of challenging and difficult. And I think the suggestion that uh, somebody should be more palatable for you to be able to hear what they're saying or consider what they're saying. I, I understand why it's hard to have a conversation with somebody who's angry, but something that I've said throughout this conversation and something that is true for anyone who's been to therapy and knows is that anger is a defensive and protective emotion. And one of the conversations, particularly in black trans communities uh, that we're having right now is this conversation around genocide. We have hundreds of anti-trans bills happening right now. They're stoking a moral panic. They've already taken away the gains of civil rights, housing, voting, education are gone. Now they're taking black power. They're trying to take black studies programs. We're seeing the systematic rollback of these gains. And so when we continue to engage with one another in ways that are um, kind of ad hominem attacks and personal attacks, while, while I respect the history of, of Jonah and, and, and all that, at the same time, when we're having public discourse, I think it's really important to make sure that we are protecting ourselves, but also protecting the conversation as well. And I, and I think when, when you say stuff like that, it makes it hard to do that. It makes it harder to do that. So in the spirit of what you are asking for, I do think stuff like that, if you leave it out, we have a better conversation. We can get further and we can be uh, more on the same page with some of this. Well, I, I disagree on that. Um, I think that's politically correct. I'm not politically correct. I think you got to call out something the way that it is. 
if you come, I, I get it. Like I, I get the, the idea of folks having that completely work things out in therapy and things like that, but you should work that out before you decide to become uh, somebody who's engaging the public. And so with an issue like this, that does scare people who don't understand. And then there are some people who are blatantly ignorant. Then there are other people who are right in here with the community. Like, I'm not sure if you're a, a gay person, but I'm a black gay person. And so I'm right in here with the community. And there are certain things that I do wanna understand. But sometimes when you are engaging folks, you have to become relatable. If you look at some of the greatest movements in history, it is because people have been able to see themselves in somebody who is completely different from them. And you can't have that when you're screaming at people and calling them things. You have to be willing to see their humanity just as much as you want them to see yours. Well, I study yeah. movements. So I know that that's actually not true. Well, um, as, a, <laughs> as a comedian, as a comedian, and looking at the impact that comedy has had, I sure. have seen that be effective. So I'll say that it, from my perspective, that's how that's I understand it. That's fair. Absolutely. And again, I appreciate you both for being honest. I think it starts here. You know, these very uncomfortable conversations, they don't feel good to opposing views, but we're able to get through the entire conversation. And for that, I'm very appreciative of both of you joining us today. Now, before we head out, uh, Samson, I know you're familiar with it, Marcus. I'm bringing you in. Um, I'd like to know what you have going on. And of course, how can people keep up with what you have as well? So Samson, I'll start with you. What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people follow you? Yes, so uh, definitely check out Love the One You're With on Amazon Prime. It's a great, uh, funny movie that I think, uh, you know, it's, it's a black gay film, but if you, if you understand anything about love or relationships, or just like good comedy, it's something uh, great to watch. Also check out a film that I did called Party and Play, uh, which is also on Amazon Prime. And you can follow me uh, on Instagram at Samson McCormick. I'm touring all the time. And, uh, and I talk about everything that needs to be talked about. And so clearly we have a lot to talk about and I expect to see y'all at the shows. Marcus, I'm bringing you in. What do you have coming up? And of course, how can people keep up with you? Sure, thank you for having me. I appreciate being here in the conversation and the, the transparency and candidness. Um, let's see, I have a podcast that I'm doing this Friday, uh, How to Be Learning with Shashati Basu. Um, that should be great. We're talking about my most recent book, uh, called Invisible Weapons, Infiltrating Resistance and Defeating Movements. Uh, you can follow me online. I'm at Prof MBJ. Um, and a lot of the work that I talk about is how we can establish a level of accountability. My work typically deals with systemic accountability, how we can get the state uh, to be more responsive. But I also talk about how our belief that we don't have enough power actually stops us from being engaged and, and keeps us uh, held down. So. Um, We'd love to be in conversation with folks. Absolutely. Again, thank you both for chiming in on this topic. Capone did have to step away, but thank you as well, Capone. But you heard from us, and then we went in from you in the comments below. What are your thoughts on some more receiving backlash from misgendering Zaya Wade? For Comedy Hype News, I'm Symphony Thompson. As Pierre would say, put it in the comments. Culture sounds like bumping the ends, like lips curling in when you acting out, like family reunions. Like my crew, put on your shoes, we're leaving. Like she's still talking and you put on your shoes for no reason. It sounds like hands praying over you and rubbing your back. And it's all of that, cause my mama black.